Okay, thank you, Peter. Uh, I'm Igor Florinsky. I will talk about submarine topography, Arctic Ocean, and uh, 3D modeling. Uh, there are two co-authors, Sergei Filipov from my institute, uh, Institute of Mathematical Problems, so Biology, Keldish Institute of Applied Mathematics, Russian Academy of Sciences, and Alexander Govorov. Uh, he is from Department of Photogrammetry, Moscow State University of Geodesy and Cartography, also known as um, MIGAIC. Here you can see outline of my presentation. First, it would be motivations for motivations for um, carry out uh, this project. Uh, second, overview of key uh, mathematical variables uh, used in the project. Then I will present approach uh, of 3D terrain modeling uh, using uh, the Blender software. Then uh, I will show you uh, results of testing of this approach. And finally, I'll show uh, a set of 3D morphometric models of the Arctic Ocean floor with uh, resolution or grid size. Grid size, it would be more correct, uh, 10 kilometer and five kilometer. Motivation number one. Submarine topography is one of the key factors determining the course and direction of processes at the litosphere hydrosphere boundary, as well as can reflect uh, the geological structure of a uh, territory. So marine topography controls ocean currents and uh, circulation, distribution of water temperature and sea ice, uh, movement of sediments on the slopes, gravitational transport of substances, for example, uh, nutrients uh, from land to ocean, water temperature, light availability, nutrient distribution, and uh, so benthic and uh, partially pelagic biodiversity. Motivation number two. Importance of the Arctic uh, Ocean submarine topography studies uh, can be explained uh, as uh, because uh, they, they are, these studies are important because first, uh, justifying national outer limits of the Arctic shelf. Uh, this is a very important uh, point for several countries uh, bordering the uh, Arctic Ocean. And uh, second, search for mineral deposits and first of all, either carpets. Third motivation, availability of data. Uh, in particular, there is international mathematic chart of the Arctic Ocean, uh, version three, and now version four. Uh, IPCAO, it's a mixed, uh, it's a DEM of mixed type. It includes depth for uh, the Arctic Ocean and uh, some portions of the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Ocean and Pacific and elevations for uh, surrounding uh, landmass of Eurasia and uh, North America. Uh, resolution of uh, IPCAO version three is uh, 500 meters, not, not resolution, grid size, grid size of these DMs, 500 meters. Actual resolution um, varies from part to part and depends on the sources. Uh, which were used for preparation of this uh, DM. And uh, IPCAO version 3 includes uh, 135 million points. It's uh, free data. It's uh, available from this uh, web, uh, web uh, link. Uh, originally, IPCAO had um, personal website. Uh, now it's uh, linked with uh, uh, NOAA. And uh, the fourth motivation. 3D representation of morphometric uh, data can help uh, to better understand relationships between topographic uh, characteristics and uh, objects, phenomena, and processes under study. This is obvious. It's clear. 
Although many germ formation systems uh, provide an opportunity for DM based uh, 3D modeling, a user is, in most cases, limited to a set of standard solutions offered by a developer. Uh, An inconsistency between uh, weak 3D capabilities of mainstream software and creative desires for scientific visualization is typical in various fields of science, not, not only for gem or gem sciences. And such problems are often solved with uh, computer graphic software, originally not intended for scientific research. So the objective of our project, it was a three-year project, uh, and it finished last year, was uh, to develop a system for 3D geometric modeling of the Arctic Ocean submarine topography using uh, open source um, uh, graphic, computer graphics, etc. Now, I just would like to recall uh, definitions and uh, maybe mathematical formulas of key mathematic uh, uh, variables used in this project. First, it was <clears throat> horizontal or tangential curvature. It's a curvature of a normal section, tangential to a control line at the given point of the topographic surface. Horizontal or tangential curvature is a measure of uh, flow convergence. Uh, when uh, Horizontal curvature is negative. Gravity drive and overland and uh, intrasoil lateral flows uh, are converged, and uh, these flows are diverged uh, when uh, horizontal curvature is positive. Uh, from a geomorphic point of view, uh, horizontal curvature can uh, reveal uh, spurs of uh, valleys and uh, ridges. Vertical or profile curvature, it's a curvature of normal section having a common tangent line with a slope line at a given point of the topographic surface. It's a measure of relative deceleration and uh, acceleration of uh, gra gravity driving flows. Uh, these flows are decelerated uh, when uh, vertical curvature is negative and they are accelerated when uh, uh, vertical curvature is positive. From geomorphic uh, point uh, of view, vertical curvature can visualize terraces uh, and shine breaks. Minimal curvature, it's a uh, curvature of a principal section with the lowest value of curvature at a given point of topographic surface. Uh, positive uh, values of minimal curvature corresponds to local convex landforms, while uh, negative uh, values of minimal curvature relates to valleys. And uh, maximal curvature, it's um, curvature of a principal section with the uh, highest value of curvature at a given point. Uh, positive values of uh, maximal curvature correspond to elongated convex uh, landforms, while negative values of this uh, variable relate to local concave landforms. This is very brief description of uh, four key uh, land surface topographic couches. Uh, all details can be found uh, in uh, this second revision of uh, my book. Now, I would like to talk about approach of 3D terrain modeling. First, we used <clears throat> software called Blender. It's a free open source multi-platform software, which was originally designed for 3D modeling, visualization, and animation for producing games, for example. It's a uh, Key advantages uh, are as follows. First, it's free and open source code. Uh, Multi-platform support. Versatility. Uh, Blender includes a 3D modeler, animator, render, node composer, and non-linear video editor. Availability of uh, real-time graphics engine with a unique programming system without the need to write program code. Support for multi-processing and uh, graphic processing unit rendering. 
active development, new uh, package versions with significant innovations appear several times per year, compact and uh, stable code, and uh, availability of web add-ons. Uh, here you can see <clears throat> 10 key steps of our approach. First, automatic creation of polygonal object from a DM. Second, uh, selecting an algorithm to model the 3D geometry. Selecting vertical aggregation scale. Selecting types, parameters, and number, and uh, positions of light sources. Uh, then selecting method for generating shadows. Next, selecting a shading method for a 3D model. It's different, there are differences between shadows and shading. Uh, selecting a material for 3D model surface, overlaying a texture, geomorphometric te texture on the 3D model, setting uh, virtual cameras, and uh, finally rendering the 3D model. Here you can see um, example, examples uh, for uh, selecting an algorithm to model the 3D geometry. Here you can see original mesh, example of original mesh, and two possible uh, ways uh, to model 3D geometry. Simple subdivision without smoothing, and uh, the catmull clark subdivision with smoothing. And you can compare results of uh, single subdivision, <clears throat> double subdivision, three and uh, triple, uh, triple uh, subdivision of faces with and without smoothing. It's obvious that smoothing is uh, better. Now, uh, here you can see uh, brightness characteristics of uh, three main types of uh, um, light sources in Blender. They called sun, spot and point. This is uh, two uh, types of uh, shadows, gen shadows generated uh, in uh, Blender. First type, it's uh, ray traced shadows generated by the adaptive uh, uh, Monte Carlo, quasi Monte Carlo method. And the uh, second type, uh, generating shadows generate, generating buffered shadows generated by classic halfway buffering method. Now you can see uh, two results, two different results uh, for shading of the surface. Uh, flat shading. Flat shading uh, is not uh, advisable because uh, it uh, remains raster, uh, raster type of the initial mesh and a smooth uh, shading of the uh, surface. And here uh, you can see uh, differences of uh, various uh, materials used for uh, 3D uh, modeling. And the materials uh, in Blender and generally in uh, computer graphics um, means, uh, and the applying materials, means using a uh, reflectance model of the surface. Uh, there are, for um, terrain modeling, uh, there are two main uh, options in Blender. Generally, uh, there are several uh, possible ways uh, to apply, uh, to use materials, but for terrain modeling, it's uh, Lambertian diffuse reflectance model and Oren Nayar. If you reflect this model. And here you can see uh, difference, be differences between uh, these uh, two uh, models with and without specular reflection. Without specular reflection here. For uh, specular reflections, uh, the most uh, well known um, model of specular reflection, Blin, specular reflection, and Warp. 
Rendering. Renderer sets uh, uh, programs producing images from mesh materials and light sources. Blender <clears throat> includes uh, two types of renderers, real-time and offline. Real-time, it's a game Blender engine. It's very fast, non-photoreal, and uh, limited visualization capabilities. And offline renders, <clears throat> it's a Blender render. It's a relatively fast and non-photoreal engine, and cycles very slow and physical-based engine. Now I'll show you uh, results of testing of this approach. For testing, we use very small uh, DM uh, extracted from IPCAO 3, uh, version 3 with a resolution of 15 kilometers. You can see here this rectangle. Here you can see uh, subdivision and uh, shading uh, of this uh, testing the original polygonal mesh. Here, no subdivision flat shading, no subdivision and smooth shading. And finally, the Cutmore Clark double subdivision and uh, the smooth shading. Now you can see uh, positions uh, of three uh, light sources sun, here, here, point, here, here and spot. Here you can see uh, different results uh, for illumination of the um, testing. Uh, 3D model uh, using uh, different combinations of uh, three light sources. Sun, spot, point, sun and uh, spot, sun and point, spot and point, and uh, using all three light sources. Here you can see uh, overlaying of the bathymetric uh, layer over 3D model. Here you can see one of the possible uh, position of uh, virtual camera. And this is final <clears throat> results offline sun visualization with the uh, Blender render engine with the vertical scale segregation of uh, 40. And uh, it takes for, for this very small model uh, very small DEM, uh, it takes about seven minutes using uh, pretty strong uh, personal computer. Uh, comparing with the mainstream Genformation uh, software, for example, uh, Map Info, it takes a couple seconds, but you can see that uh, the cost is quality of the uh, final model. You can compare this uh, three, uh, th this uh, 3D uh, models um, produced by Blender and uh, these 3D models produced by MapInfo. Now, uh, I'll show you results of 3D arithmetic uh, modeling for all IPCAO version 3, first for resolution 10 kilometers. So resolution 10 kilometers, it's uh, again pretty small DM. Uh, it's a matrix of elevation and depth about 600 by 600 points. Here you can see a uh, distribution of lights, uh, light sources, these red uh, spots, and uh, virtual uh, cameras. Depth and elevation, horizontal culture with different uh, positions of uh, cameras. Mm. 
vertical couch, minimal couch, maximal couch. And now I'll show you a set of uh, 3D mathematic models uh, for WebCow version three uh, with a resolution uh, five kilometers. It's, uh, well, one million points. 10 years ago, one million points, it was huge deal. Now it's uh, pretty small. Uh, the here you can see uh, morphometric texture textures uh, which uh, used for overlaying uh, 3D models. First, depth uh, horizontal culture, vertical culture. Minimal couch and the maximum couch. And now there will be a set of uh, 3D models with four uh, perspective views from Atlantic, Eurasia, Pacific, and North America. First, from the Atlantic. Depths. I will not comment these uh, 3D models uh, because it uh, would be better just to see them. Horizontal couch. Here we used a uh, vertical acceleration scale of 80. Vertical couch. Minimal curvature and uh, maximal curvature. Now, views from Eurasia. The same depths, horizontal curvature, vertical curvature, minimal. And the maximum. Views from North America. Depth. Horizontal couch. Vertical. Minimal. And the maximum. Some conclusions. <clears throat> we developed uh, the approach for producing 3D terrain models in the virtual environment of the Blender. This approach provides uh, one with uh, ample opportunities for 3D modeling using multiple source illumination. Options for choosing various methods and parameters, for example, the algorithms for geometry smoothing and shading, material types, and so on, uh, allow one uh, to implement sophisticated creative fantasies in 3D scientific visualization. Uh, and one of the advantages of this approach is uh, implementation based on the free open source software. Uh, we developed a low resolution desktop system for 3D geomorphometric modeling of the Arctic Ocean flow uh, based on data extracted from the EPCAO version 3 and uh, presented 3D models to demonstrate that the approach developed is effective and functional. It's clear that this resolution, this uh, grid size of uh, 3D geomorphometric model, models, three, uh, five, uh, kilometers and 10 kilometers. Uh, it allows uh, one to do uh, tectonic studies. Tectonic uh, may, may be some uh, oceanographic uh, 
genealogical studies, uh, but um, very um, small scale. Main results of this uh, research, of this uh, project, was published in uh, two papers and transactions in JS and uh, one of the IE journal. Uh, the project was supported uh, by uh, Russian Foundation for Basic Research by two grants. Okay, I think I keep five minutes. You do. And Very I have well. a quick first question, Igor. Yeah. Do you have a cookbook for somebody who wants to get into Blender on how they can take their DEM and start illuminating it? Ah, uh, cookbook. I think it's uh, possible to use this paper as a cookbook because it's, uh, it includes, uh, well, not, not step by step, not very detailed description, but generally it's a good description done as here. Uh, concerning cookbook to use Blender, um, I think, I think it's uh, possible to use Yeah. These three books, as far as I remember, these books are free of charge. Maybe some of them are available from uh, some pirate sites. <laughs> I don't remember exactly. About, I, I'm not sure about this uh, Bla uh, book of, by Blaine, uh, CRC Press, but Focal uh, book of, the, of Hess by Focal Press, it's for free, it's for sure. And I think that, uh, yes, book of Kent is, is free too. And uh, what's interesting, if uh, these first two books, Hess and Blaine, uh, they uh, are about Blender and applications, mostly game and so on. Uh, Book of Kent, it's about application of Blender to uh, astronomic uh, topics. Kent uh, works in some uh, astronomic, uh, astronomy um, observatory in US. Uh, so, uh, these three books, uh, they complement each other. Uh, 